Hi, so we're here to talk about modification accounting solutions that SOS has built for our clients. We got into the modification accounting solution business because we had clients coming to us that were going through option exchanges. And actually, originally, the first clients who came to us were doing 409A exchanges, but of late, there have been, it seems, a lot of underwater option exchanges. And many of the softwares out there don't have full capabilities, and, and systems out there, don't have full capabilities around modification accounting. So our clients came to us, they didn't want to get rid of their software, they just wanted to supplement its functionality so they'd have a complete solution. And so that's what we got in the business to do. And what we've designed basically is around three different issues with many of the softwares out there. You can see we have a grant, the original grant and the exchange that creates a new grant. Um, and there are three main problems with what most softwares will do, or what you can get most softwares to do. Um, this, this little arrow down here is representing what's known as carry forward expense, and this is a perfectly fine way to accrue expense. You can grab the unamortized expense from the old grant, you can grab that and bring it forward to the new grant. And there are ways and systems, even that don't support any kind of modification, to get it to do that functionality. We can help you with that if that's an issue for you. But this grabbing the unamortized expense at the time of the exchange and bringing it forward to the new grant and accruing it over the service period is called the pooled approach of accrual um, in modification accounting. And it's not in FAS 123R, but it's something that you hear audit firms and accountants use. So the pooled approach, perfectly acceptable to accrue over the new service period. The problem comes, however, or the problems come, for situations where you have a termination if you have a termination that actually occurs between the old vest date and the new vest date, and you have, even if you don't have any incremental expense, your software or system, in many cases you have a termination that occurs here, it's going to true up based on the vest schedule of the replacement grant. And that's actually not appropriate. The FAS 123R, I've heard some um, experts refer to it as a hidden floor provision or a floor provision. FAS 123R wants you to pay attention to the schedule of the original grant for the original expense and the replacement grant for the incremental expense. So if somebody terminated right here, what's appropriate is only to reverse the incremental expense associated with this one tranche. What most systems will do is grab the, this carry forward expense, bring it forward, and then it's going to reverse the carry forward plus the incremental, which is not appropriate. If they termed right here, the grant is vested as of the original terms of the original grant and therefore you should retain the original expense. So that's one problem. People have come to us to help them solve that problem, still want to use their software, just want us to help them say, All right, my software is accruing this, the system is doing this, what's the adjustment that I should make for terminations that occur between the original vest date and the new vest date? And that's one solution that we built. And we built that a couple of different ways, both for clients using TrueUp at termination, when somebody terminates and getting rid of the expense at that point, or true up at best, where you have many different true ups throughout the life of the grant. We built it both ways. And we also have two other solutions, both of which are related to DTA, um, deferred tax asset, and the tax accounting piece of everything that goes with equity compensation and accounting for equity compensation. So again, when you're using this uh, carry forward method or pooled approach for your accounting, you have a DTA for this replacement grant. And you have some DTA, some deferred tax asset, in anticipation of a future tax deduction that you book for the original grant. You bring this expense forward and you accrue the new expense and you accrue the new DTA. And again, that's perfectly appropriate. What happens though is that in many systems when you're using the pooled approach, the tax accounting piece, you forget about and you don't consider the DTA that was booked as you were accruing expense for the original grant. So you've forgotten about this piece of expense, we call it orphaned DTA or orphaned expense gets forgotten about, never gets reversed out of your DTA, your deferred tax asset account, which is a problem. It also doesn't get considered when somebody exercises out here, when you determine how much DTA to reverse and how much APIC, you want to increase your APIC or decrease your APIC depending on whether the real tax benefit was greater or less than the DTA that you booked, you're supposed to be using both pieces of the DTA. You're supposed to use this DTA and all of this DTA, all of the expense for both grants. And the big four firms have pretty much come to agreement on that. We don't actually know of any documentation like written in any opus on 123R or in 123R itself, but the big four firms seem to be in, in agreement on that point. But you really do need to be considering both sources and not forgetting about this piece. You're going to be understating your deficiencies and you're not going to be reversing enough DTA. The same problem exists for the diluted EPS piece. As you probably know, or maybe you don't, one of the steps in computing your diluted EPS is to calculate your tax benefit shares. 
So you compute, um, you assume everything's vested, you assume everything's exercised or released today, you wait the shares for how long they were outstanding but during period, and then you compute assumed proceeds. If all these shares were exercised today, how much cash would come into my company from three different sources? And the sources are um, exercise proceeds, the sources are average unamortized expense during the period, and the third source is the tax benefit. When this grant is exercised someday, what kind of a tax deduction is my company going to receive? Um, so that's the third step of the buyback shares, or what shares I would go out and repurchase on the open market in diluted EPS. Again, most systems are going to have a problem because they're going to forget about this piece for that tax benefit component of the diluted EPS. And I have worked with some clients who have said for them these issues are not as big a deal because maybe they're in a net operating loss situation, and an NOL situation, but actually at, at the very least tax accounting is something that most companies, even if you're in an NOL, should be booking and then offsetting with a full valuation allowance. For some companies maybe it's not as pressing an issue, but many companies it will be because you're going to be offsetting it, booking it, and then offsetting it. So in a nutshell, that's basically the solutions that we have built for our clients today. Um, we have two different models of delivery that we generally do. We either have the data sent in, or what we prefer is actually to build an application that we install on site, and it will reach into the databases of the software or system, or you can export if you're outsourced, export the data, and let the SOS accounting application grab the data, do the number crunching, and produce a report that does all these calculations for you. And with that, I will wrap up modification accounting.